This would be the Genesis account of the atheist. In the beginning, there was nothing. And absolutely nothing was happening to absolutely nothing. And then one random day, absolutely nothing exploded. And absolutely nothing became absolutely everything. And then the nothing that became everything, for no reason at all, began to rearrange itself into self-replicating, intricately complex life forms that eventually, for no reason at all, became intelligent beings that began in their highly evolved state to believe in God. An atheistic conundrum. Atheists are fond of ranting against extremist religious groups, especially any example of an extreme Christian group or individual, as though that these people were representative of Christianity at large, even though they in no way reflect the true teachings of Jesus Christ or the Word of God. But rather than using them as examples of the evils within Christianity and our world in general, it would seem to be more fair and objective to point out the discrepancy between their actions and the teachings of true Christianity. That, of course, would be the more honorable and scientific way to go, but many atheists prefer to create evil associations with Jesus Christ at all costs. Therefore, when they find irrational or hypocritical actions on the part of some Christian groups or individuals, they quickly announce that Christianity has been proven to be evil one more time. The presence of evil and suffering is to some atheists the greatest proof for the proposition that God does not exist at all. The truth is that evil does exist, and so does suffering. Humans have been granted the gift of free will which allows them to choose their actions. They consequently often choose wrongly, and as a result they cause themselves and others much misery. This is easily seen in a logical, scientific way all over the world. This is the reality of sin, the Bible says. The innocent often pay for the actions of the irresponsible and the foolish. This is what Christianity has been preaching for thousands of years. Atheists, unfortunately, fail to support this obvious, logical, scientific, and critical reality. In fact, some of them openly embrace and actually live in sinful behavior themselves that ultimately leads to anguish in themselves and others around them. But what about natural catastrophes? Is God responsible for earthquakes, hurricanes, tornadoes? We don't know for certain, but one thing is clear. He often fails to intervene in such cases. Is that a manifestation of his cruelty? Or is there much more to this issue that the atheist attempts to explain in simplistic terms? Could it be that the Bible makes evident many details about man, his sinful condition, the fallen state of our planet, and the judgment of God that atheists fail to understand or accept? It is amazing that the atheist spends so much time attempting to tear down the existence of God and his activity in the world when they profess that God doesn't even exist in the first place. Most atheist sites make sure that a section is dedicated to what they see as Bible contradictions. They often spotlight seemingly historical discrepancies so as to invalidate the entire Bible. Unfortunately, they fail to inform the readers that many renowned Christian scholars have addressed these so-called discrepancies many times and that there are ample scholarly resources to explain every one of them. But most hypocritically, they totally ignore the fact that the Bible is in total harmony in almost all cases and that various Bible books in many cases testify to the very same events on multiplied occasions with perfect harmony. Why do they not include such harmonious facts found within the scriptures? and which make up the overwhelming bulk of the scriptures? Because it would be devastating to their atheistic cause. Often they will quote a few known atheists to support their entire philosophy, while failing to mention that the vast majority of the greatest minds of the past believed in God, and that many of them were very devout Christians. Many atheists are so busy finding historical and modern-day faults with religion that they fail to look in the mirror of historical reality. They are so quick to point out that so-called Christians were the cause of inquisitions, crusades, and wars, but conveniently they fail to mention the tens of millions of people killed by atheist, communist, dictator, despots throughout the past century, and the countless millions killed by some of these leaders who worship themselves down through the eons. They 
stressed that there are about one billion atheists worldwide and millions in the United States alone. But they never acknowledge that these billions have made little or no contribution to relieving human suffering. Christians, on the other hand, have for centuries created countless charitable organizations, hospitals, clinics, schools, churches, and social outreach programs to help the myriads of destitute humans worldwide. Unfortunately, the atheist time-consuming obsession in finding fault with others blinds them to their own egregious shortcomings and failures, a blatant hypocrisy on their part. This militant atheistic technique has been used profusely as a scare tactic so as to create resistance to the teaching of intelligent design in public schools. Some atheistic evolutionists have been fanatically pushing this fraud for years and conveniently fail to mention that the majority of the founders of modern science were committed believers in Jesus Christ and the Bible as the Word of God, and that, in fact, the greatest leaps in science took place because of such great believers.